Welcome to The Back Brief. I'm Rod Rodriguez. This is from a memorandum from the Office of the Secretary of Defense to all defense employees dated 9 August 2021. Over the last week, I've consulted closest with the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Secretaries of the Military Departments, the Service Chiefs, and Medical Professionals. I appreciate greatly the advice and counsel they provided. Based on these consultations and on additional discussions with leaders of the White House COVID Task Force, I want you to know that I will seek the President's approval to make the vaccines mandatory no later than mid-September or immediately upon the U.S. Food and Drug Agency FDA licensure, whichever comes first. Now, folks, I knew the moment I read this memo that my Facebook feed was going to explode. All of these service members upset with the government for making a decision they didn't agree with. There are folks that feel like the vaccine and COVID, for that matter, is a hoax. Others think the vaccine isn't safe and they'd rather take their chances with the virus that's killed a little over 4 million people worldwide. And still others simply don't want to take a vaccine they think is still experimental. Now, I knew they'd begin the gnashing of the teeth on Facebook, and boy, was I not wrong. There were people saying that they were going to write their congressman, Representative Crenshaw, about their issues with being told this vaccine was going to become mandatory. There were others that straight up, straight up said that they'd refuse the vaccine even if it were mandatory. Then I saw the really interesting opinion that this was clearly a sign of the end times, that the vaccine was indeed the mark of the beast and that it wasn't too long now before the FEMA camps run by CDC Nazi guards would herd the unimmunized for eradication. I really did hear that. That's that's real. That happened. So here's the thing, folks. Since when did uniformed service members get to pick and choose the orders we follow? I never once considered arguing about the flu shot the smallpox shot, or the anthrax shots. I didn't even argue about having to get all my shots redone three times because my immunization records were lost. I never thought for a moment, now this is the hill that my career will die on because I don't like the decision by my government. As employees of the Department of Defense, we all recognize upon employment that our status, our job is different than that of the average American citizen. This memo is addressed to those who understand this when they sign the dotted line and or raise the right hand. This isn't a memo to the public. This isn't saying every American citizen has to abide by this memo. This is for the Department of Defense. Imagine soldiers saying deployment where? What? Did you guys do your research? Because I did. I did my own research. And I don't like the idea that you're deeming those people enemies. I, I, I did my research, and they don't seem like a threat against the United States. I'm, nah, nah, not going. Nope, not doing it. We don't get to pick and choose our orders, nor should we. Everyone wants to be cutting edge until you're asked to be cutting edge. Then it's like, whoa, hold on, chief. I, I, I want what's tried and true. Everyone knows what energy drinks do to your body. They sell them at the PX. How about the fast food we eat that is served at the DFAC? We didn't even make not smoking a thing. Like, sure, you can't smoke at work, but you can go outside and smoke. You buy cigarettes at the PX, at the at the BX, wherever. Well, they didn't make it illegal. They didn't take away your cigarettes. So you can, we, we have plenty of ways to hurt and kill ourselves. But they didn't, ter- they didn't take that away from you. They didn't make that illegal. Our vaccines were developed fast because you wanted them fast. We wanted them fast. Remember when we didn't have a vaccine and people were dying, getting sick, ventilators were hard to get, the country was scrambling to get its crap together? People were at home scared and everyone was losing their minds. Everyone was looking to the government, pressing on President Trump, do something. You're the president, save the country. So he said, cool, I could do that. Operation Warp Speed, baby, boom. Literally named 
for a very high speed. In Star Trek terms, it's faster than light. When I heard about warp speed, I signed up. They needed volunteers, and I thought it was my duty as an American to help in the fight. Myself and thousands of other Americans, we, we did it. I, I got in line. I got ejected, went to my, all my appointments, all my follow-ups. When I could get a vaccine that I knew was the vaccine, they unblinded me. Turns out I was administered a placebo, so I got the vaccine. But I didn't know at the time. I just did my part. Then the vaccines come out, and then politics once again rears its ugly head. The vaccine became about left and right. Then suddenly we didn't want it. We literally demanded it. We literally demanded the president do something, and he did. And then we got it, and then we said, nah, (laughs) I'm not convinced. The keyboard doctors went to work on America telling you everything wrong about the vaccine from microchips in the shot to it straight up killing people. Did you know any vaccine can kill you? Any single vaccine? Did you know anything can kill you too? Or how about that the virus can kill you? Here's the crazy thing. Here's what's insane to me. People survive the virus because of the amazing medical technology we have to save lives that exists today. People survive it because of the medical research and our medical technology. The very type of research and technology that has gone into creating the vaccines. That's why people live through this vaccine. But then you got folks that are look pointing at it and they're like, oh, see, it's not that deadly. People survive. Well, yeah. People survive with lung scarring, tubes in their throat. Folks survive that may never fully recover. There are people that are suffering right now from the effects of the virus they contracted a year ago. So, yeah, they survived. But it's not like they were 100% good afterward. Some did recover fully, and that's great. But we're splitting tens against the dealer's king, guys. Who does that? What odds are you playing with your health? Now, I got my two-shot Moderna, and it sucked. My arm was sore. My body ached. I was lethargic for two or three days. About the same feeling I get when I get my flu shot, which, by the way, mandatory by the DOD. So why isn't anyone refusing that? Oh, because it's not cool to argue about the flu. It's not political to argue about the flu shot. That's why we're not talking about it. How many people would die from the flu every year if we didn't have a vaccine for it? If we didn't give people the flu shot every year? Show me the numbers that refute the vaccine is effective. Show me how the vaccine is a scam. Keep your aromatherapy, healing crystals, apple cider vinegar, BS. I can't believe the very folks in uniform who claim to be hardcore pipe hitters are suddenly getting jelly legs about the vaccine. When Uncle Sam reminds you of your oath to follow the orders of those appointed over you, What you get to choose doesn't matter. You have to follow the orders that you're given. Get out of here with your personal research. You got to do what you're told, when you're told, how you're told to do it. That's the military, not Walmart. It's the military. Listen, when it's your choice, To do what you want, you do what you want. Up until this point, it's been your choice. I didn't argue with folks and it was their choice. Now, I'd encourage folks to get vaccinated. But it wasn't like, dude, it's your job, it's your responsibility, do what you got. No, 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 you you could consult with your doctor. When the DOD says, now you have to do it, now it's part of your job. Want to bitch and cry, jump into that pool with the other whiners who complain they don't like this or that policy, wah, wah, wah. Tell you what, that news pundit, And that political moron isn't going to take on your case during your Article 15 hearing. Guarantee that. If you want to throw your career away, go for it. But that's on you. Just, I mean, you knew what you signed up for. You knew what this was. I mean, what's next? 
your platoon leader, your platoon sergeant. They tell you to storm the hill. What are you going to do? Ah, you know what, Sergeant? You know, based on my extensive research, um, I don't think that hill is a good idea. I'm going to go ahead and go against uh, the intelligence professionals whose job it is literally to collect all the data. And, and no, I'm not going to do it. So we're, we're OK. So we just have a breakdown of the entire military. Rank and structure. Cool. Neat. And if you want to turn this into a left and right issue, let me tell you something. Even if the left wins or the right wins, at some point, you need people to do their job, to do what they're told, when they're told, how they're told to do it. That's the whole idea behind the military. And if you have a breakdown in that, no matter what political leaning you lean towards, you're going to have a problem. And then maybe these folks are right, though. Maybe the vaccine is going to turn us all into zombies and they'll spend their lives reveling in the knowledge that they were right. But then again, probably not. Also, vaccine passports. Yeah, that's been a thing forever, by the way. Not new. Not new. If you want to travel overseas, certain places, you got to get your shot. So not new. Anyways, let's shift gears here for a second. Have you seen this video on TikTok of a soldier getting yelled at by what appears to be a healthcare worker? Here's a quick clip. No, I'm not going to f***ing leave you alone. No, private, listen. No, private, no. You will f***ing show some goddamn respect. Or what? Or what? What the f*** are you going to do, private? What the f*** are you going to do? What are you going to do, private? Or what, private? So I saw a lot of, I'd have knocked that guy out comments, and boy, oh boy, there are some serious badasses on Facebook, folks. It's almost like some of these people forgot what it's like to be in the military. Now, I have no idea what transpired between these two guys that would turn that argument into what it was. It looks to me like the young soldiers trying to de-escalate the issue. Maybe they had been shouting at each other for a while, but this Joe obviously saw that things had gotten out of hand. It was trying to chill the other guy out. You can see his hands are up. He's like, hey, you know, let's just let's calm down here for a minute. Maybe it's because the camera's rolling. Either way, the healthcare worker guy didn't take the cue and ramped it up even more. Listen, the healthcare worker sounds like he might have been a prior service guy or at least know his way around the military. In that case, he should have known that yelling at a private Without any real authority, it's like yelling at the neighborhood kids. It's pointless, but it makes you feel better. The real answer would have been to find someone with stripes and tell them what your grievance is with that soldier. That's it. It's simple. That NCO can scuff them up if need be, or if you want to be a real jerk, you can find out the kid's unit and go pay his first sergeant or sergeant major a visit and tell them your issue. Now, in route, you may realize that you're probably as much to blame for the stupid argument as anyone else, so... Maybe it's not worth your time. Or maybe you think, yeah, it is. And that Joe has it coming. No regrets. And you tell his NCO support channel what's up. And then the ball of crap rolls down the proverbial hill. Now, what you don't do is look like an idiot on social media yelling at a private. Which leads me to another question. Where the hell were the NCOs? <laughs> where the hell were the other soldiers for that matter? Listen. Every unit has an idiot, and we always have to police that idiot up because the truth of the matter is that we all have to suffer for that one guy. Private throws a punch at a healthcare worker, and now everyone is suffering through PowerPoint slides, safety stand downs, class upon class about fighting and anger management. Not to mention, folks that were there and had nothing to do with it will probably be punished for some nonsense that only makes sense in the world of mass punishments. Listen, that soldier's battle buddies failed him. Some Joe or NCO should have pulled this kid away or called his NCO. Get your cell phone. Hey, Sarge, Private Snuffy is about to fight some dude out here. You might want to come down before we're all standing in front of the first sergeant or the man. Also, another Joe is making a TikTok out of this, so you might want to double time. Now, I'm really glad that this soldier didn't hit the guy. I really am. That turns into a seriously stupid thing. That guy presses charges, calls assault, says his job will never be the same, sues this private all for what? 
All for what? So that the keyboard Frank Dukes's can get the kumite they so desperately want to see without any of the repercussions? Sure. Why not? Now, I'd be willing to bet that most, if not all, of the folks talking about, I'd have punched that guy in the face, knocked him out, probably, they, they probably overestimate their ability to fight by a lot. These are the same guys who watch an MMA fight and boo when it goes to the ground or wonder why the fighter doesn't just use the dim mock death touch to end it. I don't know. It was ridiculous. Hey, you know what? If you see a situation going down with your fellow soldiers, don't turn it into a freaking TikTok. You can record it so that way your first sergeant, your chain of command knows what actually happened. But putting this on TikTok, man, that's a bad look for the military. It's a bad look for your soldier. It's a bad look for you. What's wrong with you? You're out there with the uh, world star, world star. Come on, man. Let's be better than that. Let's be better than that. The Olympics. The Olympics are wrapped up. America racked up 113 medals. China came in second with 88. Simone Biles. Man, did she go through some things during this Olympics. She got so little love from the keyboard Cheeto fingered public when she made her withdrawal from her event public. She said mental health issues and the public went crazy calling her weak and un-American. They turned on her so fast. And if that doesn't alarm you, then it should. This 24-year-old athlete who's dedicated herself to a sport had an issue. And instead of supporting her, we turned on her. She's not a millionaire athlete. They get paid squat. They're Olympians. That medal's not gold. That medal's probably like gold-plated nothing. That You could probably buy an Olympic medal online for 50 bucks. The endorsements definitely help, but She's not LeBron James wealthy. You know, she's an athlete doing her thing. And we get to watch her do her thing at the highest level. And when she needed a fellow Americans to support her, we crapped right on her. But then there was a turnaround. That was good. There was a turnaround. Some folks came around and finally acknowledged that maybe they don't understand what the twists are or the twisties. What it's like to become spatially disoriented in the air and not know if you're landing on your feet or your neck. A lot of her critics can't touch their toes, much less understand what she's experiencing when she's soaring through the air. And then there's folks comparing her to soldiers and law enforcement, which, but can we not do that? Can we please stop with the comparisons? Soldiers and Olympic athletes are not the same. And we should not expect the same out of them. I don't expect an Olympic athlete to understand what it's like to engage an enemy force in deadly combat. Same way I can't expect a special forces guy or a Navy SEAL fly through the air the way this girl does day in and day out and still uh, still get their spatial reasoning down. We're, we're asking two different things from two different populations. That's just insane. It's just a way for us to get angry about dumb crap. Now, a lot of the same folks that drag Biles through the mud are the same folks trying to claim that they were part of the 113 medals the U.S. earned. Simone's medals are part of that count. So are the medals of other athletes. You didn't like them. You didn't agree with them politically. But hey, they went out there and did their thing. And some of y'all got to post your USA rules social media. and feel like you were part of it. It's funny that I often hear folks tell athletes, we don't care about your opinions Clown, just go play your sport. Go catch your ball. Go hit the ball and run fast. Entertain us. 
well, maybe as fans, we should stop caring about their opinions and their personal beliefs and their political beliefs. Maybe as fans, we should stop caring about them as people and just sit back and enjoy their entertaining us. When Simone Biles says, I have the twists. When Simone Biles says, I'm not mentally, I'm not mentally there for this. When an athlete tells you, I'm, I, I don't want to do this. They owe nothing to the American public. They owe nothing to the fans. They get paid by the club. They get paid by the organizations. LeBron James doesn't owe you anything. Simone Biles doesn't owe you anything. She owes herself, her safety, and her wellness. We had an opportunity here, especially the veteran crowd. We had an opportunity to support somebody through a mental health issue. To say, hey, it's okay. Instead, we dropped the ball. And what's really sad here is as veterans, we have a community that is struggling with mental health, PTSD, among a lot of other things. We always look at PTSD, but there are a lot of other mental health issues, uh, survivor's guilt and survive, you know, people that are survivors of, of sexual assault. These are very different from sure. Uh, being spatially disoriented, not sh- not sure if you're going to fall on your neck or not. Getting your mind right, getting your headspace right. And we went online as a community and said, your mental health issues are stupid. You're weak and un-American for having your mental health issues. You suck. Well, guess what? A lot of our brothers and sisters to the left and right of us just saw us berate a 24-year-old athlete for having a mental health issue, for having a mental health moment. And they know what you think of them. You, they, we, our, our brothers and sisters to our left and right now know how the community feels about any type of mental health, any type of quote unquote weakness, because they're going to be seen that way. If we turned on Simone Biles, what are you going to do for a veteran that you don't even know? A veteran who might be going through some serious issues that you know nothing about. I'm happy that uh, USA Wrestling did so well. I'm a big MMA fan. A lot of these wrestlers are out there doing the damn thing. Some of them might make their way into the world of MMA. Some might not. I also want to know more about the TikTok video. Folks, if you have any information on that TikTok video, the full story, I really want to know about it. So if you know about it, hit me up at Rod at ConnectingVets.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at RodPodRod. Let me know what happened. You can also go check out some amazing articles written by people much smarter than me at ConnectingVets.com. Always a great place to get some news and information from the veteran world. And be sure to check out my boy, Phil Briggs. He's a podcast host. He does CBS Eye on Veterans. It's a great show. Uh, I think the last episode right now, as of this recording, he talked to Hicks and Gracie, who is the godfather of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He is a master. And if there's anyone that can talk to you about the mental game that is involved in athletics, it is Hicks and Gracie. Uh, Go check out ConnectingVets.com and also CBS Eye on Veterans. I'm Rod Rodriguez. This was The Back Brief. I will catch you guys later.